Hi friends, thank you for watching. Today is an interesting topic. Many of us love other people so unconditionally and so passionately, but we don't exactly feel the same way about ourselves. We see everything that's wrong with us, everything we think we're not. We feel insecure because of that, inadequate and sometimes even undeserving. There is a process that I have when I do one of these videos. After I choose a topic, I spend a few days thinking back and going through all of my old journals and such. Some friends watching right now may not know that every video on this channel pulls from my past because I've gone through the divorce, I've gone through the bankruptcy and then had to rebuild it all. I moved to this country by myself in hopes of creating all this. I've lost family and friends. I've been cheated on multiple times. I've been emotionally and mentally abused. I've been going through so many freaking awkward phases. I lost track. Insecurities of all sorts. Most of my 20s were spent with really bad adult acne, so I get it. This is not going to be one of those videos where you sit there and watch somebody rambling away about self-love who doesn't have a freaking clue. Self-love is a combination of self-awareness, self-acceptance, kindness, and self-respect. And those things need to be in two places, in our minds through the belief and in our actions through the way that we treat ourselves. I love the fact that you want the same things I do and you're willing to do whatever it takes to get there. I know you want a beautiful, happy life. And now you can leave me a comment below and tell me if I'm wrong, but I believe you want to feel good about yourself, accept and love yourself, improve some things and just live a good life, a life that means something. I want the same things and as I was going through the process of writing all the ideas for today's video, I so wished there was a pill out there for all the different things we want to be and do that we can just pop at night and then wake up in the morning with that. But there's no such thing. And as much as we want to believe that, we should never accept anybody telling us that there is a magic cure. It takes work and commitment. But once we start loving ourselves, beautiful things begin to happen. Throughout this video series, I'll continue adding to these ideas, but we have to start somewhere. So let's start right here and now. In the process of working to shift my self-perception, something I did was work on the things I didn't like about myself. Now, I wrote this when I was 28 years old. Listen to this mess. I don't think I'm pretty or smart enough to keep my boyfriend interested and he'll be attracted to other women. I hate the cellulite on my legs and arms. Now I wrote this before getting the checkup I talked about in the depression video last year. I hate my hands. They're so manly. Don't laugh, that's really what I felt. Anyway, on and on of this negative tone, but that was reality at the time, and I'm not going to hide that from you. Thing is that many people talk about shifting our perception and focus on the positive, and I agree. But what I perceived as the negatives bothered me so much, I couldn't just ignore them or stop thinking about them. So what I did, and what I recommend you do, is to write down all the things that you don't like, that you don't love about yourself, and be honest. Right today, right tomorrow, right on different days when you feel different things until you feel like there's nothing else to put down. Arrange that list in order by what bothers you most to least and then take the top thing and start really thinking about what you can do to improve it. Really, because I bitched and complained about all the things I wasn't liking but I wasn't doing, I wasn't changing anything. But when I started to proactively tackle those issues, almost immediately, I started feeling better about myself. My hair was thinning out. I was freaking out. So I researched and created a plan to help grow it out. I shared with you things I did actually in a video about growing our hair faster and stronger. I didn't like my hands, right? So I started taking care of them just like I do my face. Tried growing my nails for a few months. That didn't work out so good. So I put acrylics on. Bottom line is that I did things till my reality changed. They changed a little. My attitude toward them changed. And now oddly enough, I'm getting compliments on my hands. So work on the things from your list one at a time and just watch how proud you're gonna start feeling about yourself. Now, as you take those steps, I would also like for you to improve your inner monologue because I hear many people calling themselves names. Like, I'm so stupid. Of course that happened because I'm a loser. Oh, it eats at my heart. Please don't do that. Not even jokingly should you ever refer to yourself or think about yourself like that. You have to remember that everything we do, say, or think is like throwing a pebble in the water. There are ripples that follow. Trust that it's a bad thing and never talk badly about yourself. Even if you think it, Shut that out by thinking about what you could do to get better instead. And never let the words come out of your mouth. Don't reduce yourself from a complex person to a single part of yourself that you don't like. Tip number three is to create a separate list. One with your positive attributes and things you do like about yourself. Like, do you like your lips? Do you like that you're organized? List everything, but be specific. Don't just say you like your hair, say why. And my recommendation, reflect on those things 
daily. I know that can be hard and annoying to somebody who is habitually beating themselves down, but keep that list handy and remember, each item on there, no matter how insignificant it may seem, is a reason why you're worthy of love and respect. In addition, set a reminder on your phone, a reminder to add another thing you love about yourself to that list once a week, every week. Tip number four is to do things that make you feel good. Mentally, physically, spiritually, emotionally, do something that makes you feel good and stick to it. If you can't do it every day, make time to do it every week. Plan it on your calendar if you have to. It's also a good idea to pick up a hobby. Do something that makes you feel creative because feeling creative does wonders for self-love. Tip number six is to find and do something that you're really good at. Maybe you're really good at working with animals and didn't even know it. The more you do things that you're really good at, the better you'll feel about yourself. And when you like yourself, you'll start to love yourself. Always pay attention to your appearance as well. And this is not a vain thing. It's a, I care about myself enough to respect the way I look when I live my days kind of thing. Besides, I saw this on Instagram and it's funny as hell. It said, every time you get dressed, remember that if you die, that's your ghost outfit forever. <laughs> you look good, you feel good. You look like shit, you will feel like shit. Next tip may sound weird, but take a lot of pictures. Everywhere I go, even if I've been there before, I love taking pictures, I love printing them out, creating albums and scrapbooks. It's a reminder that we have been places and we have seen things and there's more and there's always been more to our lives than stressing and paying bills. When you do this, when you actually take more pictures and you print them out so you can see them, you will feel like you're living a richer and more adventurous life. Remember to take your vitamins too. You may have heard already, hormones, and vitamin deficiencies really affect our mood. So if you have a harder time with feeling lethargic or even negative or depressed, talk to a doctor, get yourself checked because you don't wanna do all these things that are meant to propel you forward, but then your body's holding you back. Repeating daily positive affirmations is also really important, so important in fact, that I am dedicating this week's private blog to it. I'm writing some powerful affirmations and I will also like to record some for you actually so you can listen and repeat just to kind of make things a little bit easier, but I need to figure out how to do that because I've never done that before. So yes, though you think it's corny or not, fact is empowering self-talk through affirmations is an asset. Tip number 11 is to laugh more, i.e. watch funny comedies, TV shows, or funny videos, and do karaoke, yes. Things like that will improve our mood and we need to do more things that are happy and uplifting. I also talked about smiling more in a previous video. Even if you don't feel like it, you have to condition yourself to do it. I won't repeat myself, but in essence, the more you smile, the happier you will actually feel. And when you feel happy, the rest of the things we need to do to fall in love with ourselves will come easier. Also, how often do you look up at the sky? I mean, seriously, how often do you see sunsets or look at the stars? We live in an incredible world and we were given life because we are worthy of being here. Stop what you're doing tonight and look up at the sky and do that more often. Stop and look up. Tip 14 is to exercise more. Uh, I hate working out, but I do it because of the internal chemistry it generates. It's also part of the proactive plan from tip number one that I shared with you. And I'm showing respect to my body. How else can I love myself? if I treat myself with indifference. It's also important to avoid perfectionism because our reality has become filters and Photoshop and credit card maximizing and social media feeds so carefully crafted to create the illusion of a perfect life which nobody has. And when we try to compare ourselves to that, we will feel like shit and feel totally negatively about ourselves. Try not to think so much of what you would like to be but you're not and focus more on the things that you are doing today, right now, to be the best you that you can be. Wow, it sucks that I don't have those things. But you know what? I'm doing all the things to get me there. That is your shift in perception. I also recommend having a plan in place for dealing with setbacks or negativity. We never really know what life will throw at us, but there are several things we can can do to get a leg up. Like, if you know that a particular person gets under your skin, for example, decide in advance what you will do and how you'll deal with that negativity. I made videos that can help give you some ideas. Just visit or revisit the personal growth playlist. Some videos I recommend you really polish up on are 13 ways to be happy, how to find our purpose in life, the videos about self-confidence and the one about the habits that will change your life, how to let go of guilt because you have to forgive your past, and the ones about dealing with stress, anxiety, 
anxiety and taking things personally. All of those will be really helpful on this journey of self-love. And anytime you think of a topic you would like to see a video about, just shout and let me know. And listen, if you try these tactics and they're not working, visit a therapist. Sometimes we need help with identifying the triggers for our emotions, which could stem all the way back from childhood. Please subscribe to my channel if you haven't already. This space is dedicated to creating a beautiful life from the inside out. And definitely make sure you get the weekly email from me for those written and audio affirmations, I promised you. Give this video a like if you enjoyed it or you learned something new. May good luck and fortune follow you everywhere you go today and every day. I'll see you again in a few days in a new video. I love you so much for being here. Bye.